10 miles north of Nice, uh, in prime e-bike territory with Fabian Burrell on home turf. Uh, we're talking e-bike specifics, uh, bike setup and riding skills. The best suspension you have on the bike are your arm and legs. Your suspensions of the bike are there for traction and the general absorption of the terrain comes from your arms and legs. If you have a handlebar that is too narrow, you have no strength. If you have an handlebar that is too wide, it's really hard to actually absorb. If you take push-ups or pull-ups, you will see that there is actually an optimum point or, or your hand width where you have maximum strength and that's what you want your bar width to be. So the point here is to kind of work with it and trying to figure out what's, what's the best what's for What's the best for us, yeah. I, I would say that on an e-bike, some people would, would believe that because it's assisted, you have to do less effort, which is the case for a certain category of rider. You can just take an e-bike and just ride up, it's easier. But I think for riders a little more experimented, you will be looking at um, a certain intensity, like in the climbs, in the way downs. I almost say that, you know, when you ride enduro, you can recover on the climbs in your lucidity, just focus on your breathing and take it easy. When on an e-bike, it's pretty much full on all the time. Like it's tech up, tech down. And um, I've been riding with some friends and a mutual friend that you know, Nico Vuyos, the other day. And we rode home and we rode for an hour and a half and it was probably one of the hardest rides I ever done. Seriously? Because it's just full on non-stop. Yeah. Could you handle it? It was hard. <laughs> it was hard, you know, Nico. So, so the message there, that you try and ver when you tr try and vary the kind of riding you do, right? You can yep. go for kind of chilled rides with your family or yep. some friends who aren't so fit. Yeah. But if you can have, you know, you need to mix it up, go for those flat out one and a half hour sessions. For sure, if you put yourself in boost mode on the Shimano engine, like full on the time, you ride 20k an hour everywhere, up, down, flat. You need to be focused and be permanently on. And I would, I would link this feeling to um, to a certain intensity that you. You don't find with a normal bike. Again, I'm not saying that e-bike is worse or better than the e-bike, it's just another discipline, it's different and it does bring a, a real intensity on the ride, yeah. And don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty <laughs> at all. <laughs> See the smile on my face. <laughs> Do you think having, like, because you've got a motor, do you think having a soft compound tyre in which where you can get the best of all worlds, you, you don't have to worry about drag on a super tacky tyre like you do it on a normal it bike? Is, it, is, it is completely right. Like, I, I do believe that on e-bike there is no need to worry about the rolling because you've got obviously the energy of yeah. the engine that is supporting you, but you will be looking at maximum grip when you're going to yeah, go up it, stuff. But and it'll give you like, confidence, right? And yeah, gives you confidence in the climbs, going to increase your, your braking resistance, which is quite quite important on, a, on, on an e-bike. And, uh, and yeah, I do believe that it's the right choice. But al always keep in mind that now bikes are designed a scented way to actually accept a certain size, tire size. So every time you actually change this, you might modify the general bike function. For example, if you if you buy a bike with a with a, a plus tire, like a 2.8 or 3 inch tire, if you're going to put like a 2.3 tire in there, it's going to significantly lower the bottom bracket, which is yeah. going to affect the ride of the bike quite a lot, right? So you, you might look at doing this in yeah. some some sometimes because if you believe that your bike is a bit too high in BB and not stable enough, so you'll be you'll be looking at trying to dive it in a bit. Yeah. That that could be something that makes sense, but always keep in mind that playing with the height of your rear tire or the front tire will radically modify the balance of your geometry. When you ride an e-bike, I mean, n number one, I, I do believe that everyone would agree on the fact that uh, grip-wise into a corner, if you are a flat pedal rider, you will actually have more traction than a cleat pedal rider. Did you actually Most just say of, that? Yeah, I do, <laughs> I do say that. Because I do believe that the feet position and the general natural pressure you need to apply on the pedal, because you're not attached to it, will actually help you to load your outside foot and your outside foot at the right proper way to have the right feeling and right pressure on the ground. Obviously, World Cup racer with cleats are capable to reach those point and level of pressure, but when it comes to actually going uphills, you do need to come more into a trio situation where you're gonna have to climb up things and be able to 
light the pressure you have to reapply a certain one afterwards. To get up the steps. To get up steps and things like this. And I do believe that, especially on e-bikes, when you do technical climbs, the torque you are capable to apply is a lot more constant uh, and dialed when you are on, on cleats than when you are on flats. Fabien, let's go and ride some technical hill climbs. I'm ready. Let's, let's do go. It. Thinking about it, your Kona stab when you won the World Championships in 2004 and 2005, yeah, yeah. probably was the same kind of yeah. weight actually as an e-bike, yeah, right? Yeah, like it was about 20, 21 kilo, which yeah. is the, actually the bang on weight we're having right now. And yeah. uh, one, one of the main thing is I think due to the position of the masses, but also the extra masses that you have compared to a normal bike, I think you, like when you have a normal bike, it's your body masses that is actually make the line yeah. choice and where you want to bring the bike in, into your line. When on an e-bike, it's a bit more important to actually place the bike itself. So you've, got to, you've got to be the boss, you right? You've got to be the boss and make sure that you put it into the right line before you let the, the brake go because it's, it's harder with your body masses to compensate. Yeah. Just because the ratio machine versus human being is actually, is actually different. And it's also ch uh, more difficult to change direction. Go yeah, quickly. It, it is. And that, that's why actually we are going, getting into that subject. Uh, in terms of geometry, don't believe that you will ride the same geometry on an e-bike right. that you will actually be yeah. riding on a normal bike. Be what are you saying here? Because, it, because an e-bike is more stable, right? Well, an e-bike has got like a really low center of gravity yeah. that is a lot higher than what it is on a normal bike. So it does bring mechanically already a certain stability without Talking about the chassis length, I do believe that on an e-bike you can allow yourself to actually be slightly smaller in uh, wow, in terms in terms of front on front center to just you know keep a certain handling, especially on on small trail riding. Yeah, great, Fabian. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, for a quick look at uh, Fabian's new Canyon Spectral on, just click over here. And if you want to see more kind of downhill tips from the Don. Uh, over here, um, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, right? Yeah, please give us a thumbs up and see you guys next time. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Thanks.